I've done some work to my spinner machine, which I'll show you here in a second. But firstly, I want to explain something that's pretty simple. If you have a spinning weight, then you have a force towards the center that's pulling it towards the center, centripetal force. So you feel the resistance to that pulling towards the center which is the centrifugal force. So with these centrifugal type machines, you want to shift the centrifugal force a little bit so it results in forward acceleration, not just circular acceleration, whatever you want to call it. So it's a bit tricky to do with a spinning weight. The only setups I've seen that work are pulsing. So if you have one pulse per turn, that's not really enough. So you need like four. So if your mechanism only has one acceleration pulse per turn, you're going to need four coupled together. So you might be wondering, how do you get that pulse? Well, if you have your weight, if you have your weight spinning around, okay, like this, if you bring this in front a little bit, it seems like it accelerates. Seems like that's what it's doing. You can do the math with the vectors. Check this out. Maybe I'm wrong, but my experiments and my math seems to show that. So, like, if you put this on a bit of an angle, then gravity will, at a, the right speed, it'll neutralize the, the centrifugal force, or it'll cancel it, so you can bring that forward easily. And I've shown that in different videos. So over to the Skinner. My guess is that's basically what the Skinner is doing. Uh, I was a little bit more excited to try this. Now I'm a little bit disappointed with its performance and I'll show you why. So Let's get this started. Now Skinner didn't show him starting his on the camera, so maybe it wasn't easy for him either. Okay, I messed it up. Come on. Let's go. Trying to get it going quickly, which there we go. It's a bit difficult. Hopefully you see it there. So what I'm doing is when this comes around to here, then I quickly go like this and then back again. And that's very easy to do. You get the timing right, and it seems to cause everything to accelerate. So basically, it's just what I showed in the picture. Um, this goes like up like this, go like that, and then back. And then it accelerates. Now, 
it's probably easier to start with four. This is a pain in the butt to start sometimes. And when it accelerates, the frame wants to jump off the floor. And the other thing is, is that I'm lifting this weight with basically no effort. Well, let's try that one more time. here is a little bit long, longer than Skinner's. Now Skinner's top weight, it almost looks like it's just going flat across, so it doesn't move much, but that's difficult to do by hand and still have it work. Okay, that's better. Not moving it too much. But you can also lose the timing. There we go. So do it twice per turn but when it, once it goes like this try to give it a bump and then bring it back so let's try doing it this way too so my weight may not be in exactly the right place but You can only get one pulse per turn. Now I didn't put the vertical weight thing I talked about on here, but oh well. I don't think it makes a whole lot of a difference. Right here. Didn't forget about it. It really just needs a holder. In my opinion, I don't think it will make a difference. I should still try it though. So, you get one pulse per turn. Uh, with four, everything is smoother, right? If you have four pulses, everything's coupled together. So it was that Italian guy that built his, but his was not loosely coupled. Now I've tried to make timing mechanisms that are attached to this. They don't work. Don't waste your time. Uh, it's because if you have something attached to this timing mechanism, you no longer have any centrifugal force to work with. So the question is, to build more of these or to go with a better design, if there is such a thing. So this has one, two, three, four, 
five pillow block bearings, and this is not the right way to use one. You might be able to use a car axle like we have down here because this is, this is not supposed to move too much, just like a tiny bit. It's hard to get it. It's hard to get it started, and it only moves a tiny bit. Skinner didn't show his starting on camera. So Query did a good job of showing it working well, but when you build a big one, there's more issues. Uh, so the question is, build more of these or go with a simpler, more straightforward design, like say four of these. weight here, you put a vertical, your weight in here, spin this, and then have it set up that as this comes up, you want to put this in front of it a bit. So as it comes down, it not just falls down, but centrifugal force accelerates your wheel. I think David Query is right. This is the right way to build a Skinner machine. If you look at Skinner's video at 27 seconds, it goes like this. And you can see that all the other weights don't start shifting until he gets up like this, where you can see he's tilting it. Which basically, to me, proves everything's loosely coupled. Because people have tried things that weren't loosely coupled, including me, and they don't work. And on this one, it does work, but it's low power. And uh, it's tricky. You know, if you load it too much, it'll stop. That's why I'm thinking this design might be better, even though you have to make it really big. So that's basically it. Yeah. The people that have the money to finance and work on these things, not interested. So that just leaves me.